we are live in 5, 4, 3, 2, right now. Let's do it. In this video, we're taking a look at the brand new sound pack here in GarageBand. That's right, it's Mark Ronson's Watch the Sound Pack, and uh, we're going to check out everything there is about it. If it's your first time here on the channel, my name's Pete. This is Studio Live Today. My goal on this channel is to help you create, record, and release your best music. We do that through tips and tricks and tutorials and live stream videos just like this one. If you're here live, say good day in the chat. If you are watching on the replay, don't worry, we love you just as much. Uh, leave a comment down below your questions, your beliefs, I don't know, whatever you want to put in there, your feedback about this pack. I actually put a, uh, I put a survey on my channel and more than half of you really love the fact that uh, Apple have thrown out these 10 brand new packs. If you're just catching up here, here's what we've got. We're going to be looking at this one here today, the Watch the Sound pack from Mark Ronson. We've got 200 Apple loops, eight drum and beat sequencer kits. We've got 25 keyboard patches and 30 audio recorder patches as well. So we've got a lot of stuff to play around with here on this one. <clears throat> we'll be diving into that in a moment. We've already checked out the Dua Lipa and Lady Gaga remix sessions. They are linked down in the description in the playlist, which you can jump into after this show. And then we will continue on and we'll check out all of these. We've got another seven packs that we're going to look at. I've also got an overview video. That's also down in the playlist. If you just want a little taste of everything, you can jump down and check that one out. But today, it is all about the Watch the Sound pack here. So what I'm going to do here is jump in and show you how we can use some of these sounds, what some of them sound like, and talk a little bit about the background of these new packs, because we've never really had anything quite like this before. In fact, uh, we've not actually had any of these new um, audio recorder patches and presets for a very long time. So it's very, very cool. Now you'll notice here that we've got a little thing saying watch on Apple TV. Now here, this is the cool thing about this, is that this pack is related directly to an Apple TV series called Watch The Sound. I've started watching it now. Uh, it's Mark Ronson and he's basically talking to a bunch of artists and producers and music creators all about how they create music and about the history of music creation. And it covers all the topics from auto-tune to sampling to arranging to a bunch of really cool stuff. And the cool thing about this is a lot of the sounds that are referenced in the show are actually right here in the pack. For instance, the one that I was playing there at the start, the reason I wanted to play that one here on the keyboard sound is this is the Mellotron flutes. And this is based on the sound that was used in a very famous Beatles tune called Strawberry Fields that... Uh if you were wondering, oh, what does that sound kind of like? Of course, I can't play that riff, otherwise uh, we get copyright claims out the wazoo. But it's really cool to get the actual sounds. Like, these are so close to the sounds. And a lot of the producers producing these packs, it's not like they're like, oh, we made a sound that's a bit like what that is. Because of the power of sampling and because of the power of GarageBand, we have... We have some really, really cool instruments right in here that we can play around with. So we'll definitely be checking that one out as well as some of the other keyboard sounds because look at this, we've got a whole bunch of them here that we can play around with even just in this brand new pack. So that's the preface. Let's crack on and take a look at the pack, shall we? We're going to build out a sound using this sound pack here. So here it is again. If you haven't got it already, you come in here, you tap on that one. Where it's got downloaded, you can hit that button. If you want to hear the sounds, you hit this preview Watch button. This home, mana. Watch this home, mana. And you can hear that's the, uh, the theme, theme music of the TV show, not surprisingly. And here's something that I didn't know, and I don't know, everyone else is probably going, yeah, Pete, we know. But if you hit the play button up the top here, you actually get a little video. And this is the same for all of these packs. I didn't know it because in our other sound packs, we just had this header. We didn't have anything there. But again, you've probably all discovered this, and I'm just behind the times. But if you come up to here and you hit play, it's going to give you a video preview. I've always been obsessed with how things sound. It's the difference between a... And you can check out, and yeah, look, we already got a flash there. When, when it flashes up uh, Sir Paul and Dave Grohl as the two faces that you see first, you know that you're in for, for something cool. So it talks a little bit about the, the show. Now, if you uh, want to check this one out, you can watch it. It's, it's available now, and uh, it's on Apple TV. So you do need an Apple TV subscription. I think it's $7.99 per month uh, in the US. Depends on where you are in the world. 
but uh, you also get seven day free trial. So guess what? If you've never used Apple TV before, uh, jump over and grab your seven day free trial. You could probably binge this whole series. Don't don't tell Apple I said that, but you could probably binge this whole series. And then if you're not keen on staying on, then you don't have to. But Hey, there's a lot of cool stuff on Apple TV, to be honest. And because this is all integrated, if you're an iOS music creator and you've got Apple devices and you're creating in, in iOS, seeing Mark Ronson and seeing him using like some of these tools and then knowing that you've got this whole sound pack that you can play with is pretty darn cool. Uh, so yeah, the, the other ones have the same sort of things here. So I didn't realize this as well, but if you go to the Lady Gaga one, you hit the play button there. I'm a it's going to uh, give you a whole thing about that. And then it takes you behind the scenes and it actually gives you a tutorial there. <laughs> from Apple themselves. So it's like the tutorials that they do in the Apple Store. So if you've never done one of the Apple Store sessions, you can actually do that there. And the other cool thing about this is if you tap on this one here, it'll drop it over there and you can actually watch the tutorial while you create in GarageBand. So you can have the tutorial there in the corner of your screen and then you can actually be playing around with it. I think that's super darn cool. We'll close out of that for now because we want to crack on. Let's look at these sounds. We're going to, first of all, let's uh, go into our audio recorder here and we'll take a look at the loops because we've got a whole heap of Apple loops that we can play around with with this. So if we tap on this one here, our track view, it's going to take us out to here. Oh, look, we've, <laughs> I'm already in a, a project that we were working on from our last one. So we're actually, first of all, we're going to create a new song here. So we're going to come back into GarageBand. We're going to go to iCloud Drive, GarageBand iOS, and we're going to create a brand new song. So we're going to audio recorder and let's start layering up some loops. I, I just this morning was watching the sampling episode of Watch the Sound and they were talking a lot about uh, about loops and about um, you know crate digging and how they got a bunch of like cool breaks and beats from just you know digging through records and sampling them and a lot of these are inspired by and come from that sort of vibe so here if, if we're in our apple loops we can tap on this one to filter by our sound packs and we can tap sound packs there we're going to turn all of them on there and then just come down and we're just going to tap this one watch the sound and drop back out to here well i went too far out <laughs> <laughs> and now we've got just these ones here. And you can see that 250, yeah, we got a whole bunch of sounds that we can actually play around with here. So let's let's build up a beat, shall we? So we need some uh, we need some drums beats to start with here. So we'll find ourselves some some drum sounds in here. A lot of this is melodic here, so we'll uh, we'll come and we'll try and find. In fact, a lot of them actually have what about this one? Yeah. So we'll use this east side as a bit of a basis for some funk that we're going to get going on here. So that's the so we've got a chorus there, we've got a bridge, we've got a verse here. So we can actually build out a bit of a, a bit of a sound here. So why don't we grab the uh, the verse to start with? So the verse drums, and we'll just drop them in there. And there you go. Well, what we'll do is we'll do four bars of the verse drums. We'll then grab this one and we'll go the east side chorus drums. We'll create just a mini beat here. We're just going to do a 12 bar beat. Not a, not a 12 bar blues, but a 12 bar beat. We're going to tap on the plus there and uh, let's turn this one into, we'll take automatic off and we'll make this 12 bars like so. We'll grab our loops and uh, oh, we've gone back again. Oop. We've made a mistake. Hit the undo. Undo is your friend when you're in here. We'll go to loops. And what were we using? <laughs> now I've forgotten immediately. It was the east side, wasn't it? Yeah. So we'll go the east side uh, uh, bridge. We'll just bring in the bridge. Take it to the bridge with the drums. East side bridge drums. So I haven't even sampled these, but let's just listen to these 12 bars and see if we can get a bit inspired and creative. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. And then it goes into our bridge drums, which will do this. And you can hear there that built into these loops, you can hear a bit of crackle. You can hear a bit of that background crackle going on there. That just makes it sound extra authentic and extra cool. All right, let's, let's bring in some bass. Now, we could just use the same bass that we use in there. But to me, the idea of using loops is to mix things up. So uh, did I see some disco somewhere? I think I saw a disco sound. So let's see if we can bring in some disco uh, for our bass. So we'll come down here. These are actually nicely organized. So if we do the verse again here, what's the disco break in first? <laughs> So a lot of these are not only just the actual riffs, they're a whole lot of different sounds in here, but we'll, uh, we'll maybe we won't use that one. We've got different samples here as well. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of cool stuff, right? That's kind of cool. 
the the done wrong sub bass. Let's see if that can be our our all the way through kind of layer here. Let's uh, take a listen. I think that sits nicely in there, don't you? We're going to go with it anyway. So we've, we've combined a couple of different loops here and different types of loops as well. Let's find something different. What about uh, something from the disco? We, we did try and go disco and then we didn't go there, did we? So let's try and find some uh, disco break and percussion. Yeah. And this is the cool thing about loops. People say to me, Pete, loops are just cheating. Loops are just bad because everyone's using the same loops. Change up your loops. Vary things. Layer. Layering is key. So if we grab this disco break and percussion and put this over the top, we'll just move this down so we can keep things uh, organized. Tap and drag it down. We've now got two different types of drums here. If we scroll, if we bring this one out, take a listen to just the two drum sounds together. So that's totally different now. If we we're just playing this one, everyone might be using that one and a lot of people might be using this one but who's using them both together? And then the other key thing, and I've talked about this in previous videos, is the when you're using loops, is to change it up. Change some of the settings here, because you don't want, if you leave everything at 4-4, C major, it's gonna sound the same. So I want this to be a bit more of a laid back kind of vibe on this one. So let's go, last time I went 99, let's go all the way down to uh, 92, one of the best years for, for rock music. <laughs> Actually, 91 probably. Uh, but now we've got this sort of sound. Yeah. So we've already started building something else. Now I need something that a bit of an effects sound here to go over this one, right? So we need something that's going to give it. And in the in the show, if you watch the series, they talk about this that there's drums and there's bass, but your best beats and the best sort of beds for a track usually have something a little bit interesting in them. And we'll build some things with some instruments as well that we're going to use in this. But uh, what about we need something with FX? In fact, what we can do is we can search. So we've already filtered, but we can also search. So if we search FX and hit enter. Here you go, we've now got just the FX ones here. So uh, we've already got the east side. What about the south side? What's this one gonna do? That's not bad, right? What about the uh, number two? Oh, that could be cool. Yeah, let's go with that. So what we can do is drag this one in here. But what we wanna do is we only want that for the, say the second half of this as a bit of flavor coming into our uh, chorus section. So you can, don't have to use a loop for the whole way through, but now we've got this sound and now this will change it up a bit here. And the cool thing is that if you've used, if you've used these and someone else has used them, who else is going to have thrown that little effects in there and changed it up a little bit? And maybe what you want to do is even play around more and go to your settings here and maybe you reverse that effect. Let's, let's just see, let's experiment, let's see what it does. Yeah, so you can, you can change things up there. Now, um, again, the other thing we can change here is your key signature. So instead of C, what if we wanted to drop this to say B? Now we get this sort of sound. Now, very quickly, you'll notice that <clears throat> right at the top here, we're starting to peak. And this is a trap that a lot of people fall into. If you put, you'll notice that I've started turning things down. As I'm layering, I'm turning things down. Because if I just double tap on each of these and turn them all the way up, look what's going to happen. We're going to have all of these right up here at their unity gain. Well, it doesn't work to double tap there. You've got to double tap with your finger to get the... Or does it not have a double tap on volume? I thought it used to. Anyway, if you go with where the default volumes are, check out your, your overall mix here. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds good, but you're starting to clip on each of your individual tracks as well as overall. So start turning stuff down. Get in the habit of once you start building up a mix, start turning things down a little bit because otherwise you're going to run out of headroom and that's not going to be fun for anyone.
there you go. So now we're, we're not quite as, as peaky. We'd probably want to turn it down a bit more, but we'll play around with that as we go. So that's your Apple loops. You've got a whole ton of them in here and you can play around. Like I said, you can search them. And if you want to filter to just this pack, hit the filter by, hit the sound packs and select just the watch the sound pack and you'll be able to play around with those sounds. Let's now check out the keyboard patches. So to get that, we need to add a new track. We'll tap on this plus button. Uh, yes, I did get a haircut. Uh, for, for those that are here live. By the way, hello to the folks here live. Uh, we've got Metalhead Hippie there. Metronome is on. Yeah, let's turn the metronome off after this one. Otherwise, we're going to hear the click clock the whole way through. Um, so hello to Robert. Hello to Thomas Christ, DJ Normal Norman. Hello to uh, Jay Star. Uh, hello to uh, everyone that's here. Uh, to Russ. Russell, hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, why won't it let me click Russ? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There was a slight delay there with clicking Russ. Ru Russ was hacking at the time. Uh, hello to Red Sky Lullaby. Red Sky Lullaby. All right, we're going to continue on here. Let's now come in here and grab some keyboard sounds. So we've got our beat sort of coming along. Now, I was playing around with the Mellotron flutes. I'm not sure that... Is the Mellotron Flute going to work in this one? Maybe not. So we're going to go with something uh, a little bit different, a little funkier instrument. So we've got a bunch of stuff that we can play with here. And again, to get to the, the just these ones, we can go here to our keyboard sounds. And if you tap on Recently Downloaded, it'll give you a list of all the packs here. We can then go watch the sound, and then we can find what we want. <clears throat> so let's start with a pad. We want a nice pad. What's the electric red so sofa pad? That sounds just too interesting not to play around with. I like it. So uh, let's let's turn our metronome off because that was annoying, and we'll play this beat. That's right. We're in B now, aren't we? So we want to. Yeah, we want to play this pad like this. And uh, what we can uh, no, we won't we won't do anything too fancy here. We'll maybe play with some effects later, but we'll just put a basic pad uh, on a B note over the top of this one. So we'll hit record, and then we'll play this one. Stop that one. So we're now getting a little bit more interest in here. So we've now got a pad, which again, we need to turn down. We don't want the pad to be overbearing. And now we, we can drum, jump in, and when we record some vocals in a little while, that's where our vocals are going to kick in after that. And maybe we loop this pad, maybe we don't. Let's just loop it for now and leave it in there and see if we want to keep that in there. Let's add some more instruments here because I think we need a complementary bass to go along with that bass that we've already got in there. So let's play around with some of the bass sounds we've got in here. Make it musical, magical and new. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Does anyone do this when they create a sound where you just give it a name? You're like, that's, that's definitely the Paisley funk bass. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll, uh... that might be a little bit too intense. We need something a bit smoother. This is a smoother kind of sound. So let's go to the Make It Musical. And by the way, if, you, if you're auditioning instruments here on the iPad, you can just tap here and then give it a bit of a listen. It might be that one, but we'll try these. Yeah, because we want something. No, maybe it's that one. Yeah, that magic and new bass. So we're good with that. We'll tap off there. Yeah, we want something like this, right? Yeah, the F sharp, because we're in B. <laughs> Why did Pete make himself play in B? Who knows, but we're going to go with it. So let's, uh, let's use this one. And we're going to play in a little bass groove to go over the top of this one. Two. I think the uh, the second version I did, the reason I played that through twice is I think the second bass is actually a better one. So what we're going to do is split this out. 
we'll go here, we'll tap, we'll hit split, we'll split that out. I don't want this first one, so we're just gonna tap it and delete it. We're gonna use this one because it's a little bit simpler and I like the way I did the little uh, breakdown there that went across the top. So we'll, uh, we'll play this one through, we'll bring it back to here, we'll loop it out because I reckon I'll use the same bass throughout and we'll play. <laughs> There you go. So now we've got two different bass sounds. Now, did I, did I cut off that first bass sound? I think I did. So we'll go to the edit button here. So this is where we can edit in. This is the cool thing about using these sort of instruments is that we can now, because it cut off this first note, see, there's our second note. But if we wanted to add that first one back in, we just slide our padlock there and we tap and bring it on back because we want a little staccato note. And now if we hit play. Nice, yeah? And we probably need to just quantize this because I was a little bit off on my timing uh, and we're going to cheat. Yes, I insist we cheat. Let's go to here and go to our track settings and quantization. And we'll just put it to just a little hint of 16th note quantization. And we'll put it straight because uh, we're not really swinging this sort of beat. So... <laughs> Yeah, right. We're getting we're getting like a dark sort of uh, 90s R&B, a little bit of a black alicious kind of vibe going on. I, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Tell me if this is coming together. But again, this is the fun. This is experimentation. What are we 15 minutes in and we've just built out something. This may be something that I do something with. This may be something that just sits on the shelf or gets deleted and we try something else. Uh, Jalen says uh, I should release a full version. We'll see how we go. Uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, yeah. Um, I, and as, as DJ Normal Norman says, I think I had the bass too loud and it made them the mids and highs uh, yeah that that can happen a lot is that if you turn things up too much the bass will actually overload and what GarageBand has is an auto normalization feature that basically becomes an auto limiter so if you go over if you watch your meter up here and it's going too high it's going to turn down everything and that's where you get that wub wub sound that sort of uh, that pumping phasing sound if you're getting that pumping phasing just grab all your sliders and turn them all down I'll show you a tip later as well that we can use an FX tree to uh, to give ourselves a uh, reduced overall volume if you kind of get stuck and everything's too loud. So uh, we've got our basses here now. Do we need any other keyboard sounds? Uh, let's just see. Maybe we need some melody sounds coming in, but probably in the, the bridge section. So let's just come in here. We'll grab some more sounds and we'll find something melodic. I, I can't resist using these Mellotron flutes because they're just so cool. But maybe we use them up the, up the scale a bit. Maybe we use them up here. Yeah, so we'll use them as they aren't intended, which is the point of music. You want to do things and, and make it a bit different. So we're going to come down here to bar nine, once we're in this last section, and this sounds like this. So we're going to, uh, we're going to experiment with something here, because I reckon a bit of a... Maybe. Or maybe, you know what's actually might be cool? Why don't we uh, grab our friend the arpeggiator? Because we can just set an arpeggio here and uh, we'll do, maybe we'll do 16th note arpeggio. If you don't use the arpeggiator, it's super cool because look what happens when we, we do that. But I reckon we could just do a... Something like that with a three note thing there and maybe a, maybe a three octave range with a three note. Yeah, I think that could actually kind of be a little bit of a counter melody here that's going to work on this. It may not, but let's try it. So we'll hit the record button. We'll come out here, we'll hit the record button, and we'll play this chord. Right? <clears throat> what do you reckon? Just for something a bit different. Again, you don't have to go to a lot of effort with this stuff. You can use the tools at your disposal. Use that arpeggiator. And uh, again, if we turn it down, and I, I'm not, I wasn't going to use any effects straight away, but I'm going to here just to do a little. Sounds too high in my opinion, says Cody. Yeah, maybe we need to drop it an octave. In fact, let's just do that now. So settings, uh, this is why I love having you folks here. We'll transpose it down one octave. And I think you're right. I think that might sound better. Down an octave. <laughs> 
right? And you know what I think that needs? I think that needs some stereo width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck a flanger on here. I wasn't going to do any effects straight away. In fact, there's already a micro phaser in here. So maybe we'll use the micro phaser and uh, we'll make sure it's got a little bit of feedback on here. And then we can increase this. Uh, yeah, let's try this. Right, so it's sticking it further out by adding this phaser. So if we just bring this back in with our mix now, let's take a listen. And you'll notice there that it's kind of doing a, a, an unusual rhythm there. Like if I wanted to, I could just change that to be do 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 But I kind of like the fact that it's a little bit counter and it's not quite on there. It's it's making you think, oh, is it going to get back in? And it's creating that feeling of suspense. So we'll go with it for now. So there you go. We've got our, our beats here that we've used our Apple loops with. We've got our keyboard sounds. Let's now play around with our drums, shall we? Because the other thing we get in here, if we go back to our... Uh, whoop, we've gone too far, <laughs> but that's a good idea. Come out now and change this. So I'm going to change this to the watch the sound demo so that I know that this is what I'm doing here today. And we'll tap on that one. Uh, so we're back in here. Let's now look at drum sounds. So we'll tap uh, this one, <laughs> not all the way out, and we'll come over to drums. Now, the easiest way to add drums here is the beat sequencer. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that to start with. We'll just see if we can add just a little. I think we need some hats. Do you think we've, we're missing a little bit of top end in our drums? So let's just use the beat sequencer to create some hi-hats that are going to work along nicely with these. So what we can do, tap in the bottom left here, and we can once again go to recently downloaded. We're going to scroll on down and uh, go to watch the sound. And here we got, so we've got the CR98 uh, Iconic, we've got Hollywood Foley in the kitchen, uh, Lindrum turned down, Mix Boom Bap, and Pawn Shop 808. I don't know if any of these are going to work, but Hollywood Foley sounds interesting. So this is using kind of your pots and pans. So I would imagine, whoop, we just we just did a bunch of stuff there. We'll undo that. I'd imagine this would be, uh, I haven't got up to the, the the beat making section of the show, but I imagine this would be Mark Ronson like sampling some sounds and creating a kit like this to, to use. Because uh, if we go through the sounds that we have here, whoop, uh, how do we do? Oh, I see I've forgotten how to use this now. We'll have to go and play with it in a minute. Uh, but what we can do is even though we're using that kit, we can then change our pattern here. And uh, we want something, uh, what should we use? We just want something that's got a little, just some hi-hats. Or do we just create our own? Let's create our own. So let's go all the way to the left here and we'll go to a new blank pattern. Boom. And uh, we'll just play around with this and see if we can create. Because I reckon we just need a hi-hat that's, Oh, well, that's a bit of a tinny hi-hat, isn't it? What's, what's the this sound going to do? Oh, yeah. I think maybe just an extra hi-hat there. Nah, just, I reckon just keep it simple. Let's just record this in as, as a bit of a background. So just hit the record button and it's going to... Uh... Yeah, you just got that... You just got that off... Yeah, uh, someone said DJ Normal Norman, shaker. Yeah, maybe we, we do need a shaker. So let's show you how we can add shaker using a different method. So we've used our beat sequencer there. Well, again, we'll just have that going all the way through. By the way, all I'm doing here is grabbing the end handle there, bringing it back to four bars and looping things out. If you just tap it and hit the loop button, that's going to loop it your whole rest of your way. The other way we can add drums is manually. Let's hit the plus button. Let's go more drums. And uh, once again, we can choose which pack we want to use. We want to use the Watch the Sound pack. And uh, do we have something in here that's going to have a shaker? Maybe not. We might need to try something else. But let's just explore one of these other kits and see. Oh, there you go. Doesn't really have the sort of shaker that we want. Uh, what does the Lindrum have in here? Yeah, that's got a bit of a better shaker. Maybe we just add a little bit of drive on that one. Oh, no, <laughs> just a little bit of drive. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll just experiment with this. We can change the sound afterwards. That's, that's the way. That's the cool thing about this. You can get your sound in there and then you can change it up. So let's just go with this. So. There you go. 
So we'll come out of there. Again, I liked the second time around a bit better, which is why I uh, I did it twice. <laughs> so we'll split out, split out that one, get rid of the first one, and delete it. Now, because we want some layers, I'm only going to bring this in from this second time around. So we're going to transition. Let's just hear the bar before and then the bar after to hear the transition. <laughs> Yeah, coming along, right? Okay, cool. So we've got that. We've used three different methods here now. Once again, we've used our Apple Loops that we can add in there. We've used our keyboard instruments and we've used our new drum kits, which you can use either through the beat sequencer or you can program them in yourself. You can uh, play around to your heart's content. And as I mentioned there, let's just say that we were not happy with this shaker sound and we wanted a more like authentic, realistic shaker. All we need to do is actually tap on here and we can actually change up the sound by changing the kit. So let's just change this to the In the Kitchen kit. <laughs> that's, a, that's scissors. I like it. What's the mixed boom bap? See, that's now not really a shaker. That's a clap. So what about the Pawn Shop 808? We'll come back to that. That's not it. And this is the thing. Different kits will have different things in different spaces. <laughs> the Hollywood Foley? Maybe not. So, uh... Probably the Lindrum's the one that's going to be the most relevant. And of course, you can then come in here and you could use, you don't have to use these. I wanted to use all things within this pack, but you could, of course, go to a completely different pack. You can go back to your Prismatica or any of your other packs and grab whatever you want. It's all just about experimentation, yeah? Experimenting and trying new things is the spice of life. Let's now go and grab some microphone sounds. Now, because Pete's unprepared, you're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to have to roll backwards. Are you ready? Three, two, one. We're rolling away. Luckily, I bought an extension cable for my headphones so that I can actually get away from the microphone and it's not quite as ridiculous because guess what I left over on the shelf? <laughs> my vocal mic. Luckily, if I've planned things out, I do have an XLR cable in this drawer right here. This is planning, folks. This is a, this is a professional at work here. Uh oh, where's my where's my XLR? There it is. Oh, okay, good. Because I didn't on the last uh, video, I didn't actually record in anything. I uh, I just used there we go. Record that. In. I just used um some previous samples, and this time around, I actually want to record. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug my microphone into. I'm using a Steinberg UR22C interface, which is what my iPad's going through here. Plenty of videos here on the channel if you want to learn how to use this. Uh, I've also got a web a link at studiolivetoday.com/usb. So if you're looking to plug in USB gear to your iOS gear, uh, there's plenty of stuff on that there. And uh, yeah, Mark, I think we're going to have to go some yeah, girl. Because uh, that's what I do. Whenever I record vocals, for whatever reason, I say, yeah, girl. And I don't know why. It's just weird. Just how it goes. So this is what I'm super excited about on this particular pack and why I wanted to tackle this pack first before any of the others. And that is that if we hit the plus button here and we go to our audio recorder. Now, for the longest time here in audio recorder, if you go to more sounds, I've, I've ruined it there because I've already showed you. We've got like our drum sounds, keyboards, acoustic guitar, vocals, producer effects, and fun. Now, original GarageBand, OG GarageBand literally just had fun. So we were playing around with the clean and the monster and the robot and the dreamy and the bullhorn. Like uh, OG GarageBand folks will remember all of those well. We then got in version 2.0, Two, I want to say, a lot of these other presets. And many of you would be super familiar with the vocals because that's what most people actually record using is a vocal preset here. But now, if we go to recently downloaded, check it out. We got all this business. So we got a whole bunch of new different sounds that we can actually use here to record vocals. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, use one of these. So we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a main vocal first and we'll use sort of like a, a reverb. I haven't tried reversed reflections. So we'll turn this one on. Now what I need to do, check one, two. So I'm coming through on this microphone, but I need to monitor. So if we hit the monitor button there, check, check one, one, check one. one. Holy moly, that was cool. So um, this is not going to be, just turn that monitoring off. That is cool. Reverse reflections. This is not going to be, this is going to be more for like an ad lib or for something additional that we're going to add to it. So uh, we might we'll hold that thought and we'll find another one. So we'll just grab our, uh, oh, what's the upstairs tiled bathroom? Let's just uh, check. One, two. I like it, but I don't think it'll work for this one. Uh, what about just a medium sized room here? Yeah. Cha. Ba. Yeah. Again, not bad. Uh, what's uh, th There were some actual vocal ones on here, weren't there? Yeah. 
What about the 60s uh, vocal phaser? Yeah. yeah. Check. That one might actually work a bit better. So we're going to go with the 60 vocal, 60s vocal phaser. I'm going to make up some stuff here, and we're just going to record uh, in and see what happens, shall we? So uh, this is, uh, I'll turn down this mic, so you're just going to hear me through here, and uh, we'll, we'll give it a go, shall we? <laughs> Experiment for the win. Win, win, win. All right, just need to turn up, turn up that sound. This is a bit intense, isn't it? All right, record. Yeah. Rolling down the street at 17 past 39. Don't know what time it is, cause I can't even tell the time. Yeah, girl, we gotta get down, gonna get down. Why are we playing badminton? Why did I say badminton, not badminton? <laughs> Turn off that monitoring. <laughs> now, you would have noticed there on my input gain, I didn't really spend a lot of time setting my input gain, so I was probably too hot on this. So we're going to find out here in a minute. I've probably clipped on some of these vocals. Uh, it's not too, too bad, but definitely over here, it's a bit weird. Let's be brave and solo these and listen through with this effect. Rolling down the street at 17 past 39 Don't know what time it is Cause I can't even tell the time <laughs> Yeah girl, we gotta get down Gonna get down to the park and play Badminton <laughs> Why? What happens to my brain when I'm singing? All right, so I'm, I'm not a fan of that particular vocal effect, but here's the cool thing. All we need to do is tap on our microphone and change it. So we don't want to phase it. What about it just a more of a subtle kind of chorus sound that we're going to go with here? Rolling down the street at 17 past 39. Don't know what time it is because I can't even tell the time. Yeah, girl. We gotta get down, gonna get down to the park and play badminton. Oh, you're gonna have badminton, badminton in your head for the rest of the day, and I apologise. Uh, so that is that is part one. By the way, folks, don't take yourself too seriously when you're making music. It should be fun. It should be ridiculous. It should be preposterous. Just enjoy the fun and enjoy the process. All right, let's go with another one. Well, uh, I wanted to go back. What was the one that was fun? <laughs> the fun one? The reversed reflections here. Let's just do a little bit of a... I want to do just something over the top of this. <laughs> Using this one, that's just going to be like some distant kind of background, quiet stuff that, uh, that we can go with. So uh, let's come out of here. Now, by the way, Tip for young players, if you're using a two-channel interface, I've showed this plenty of times before, but everyone seems to keep asking about it, so I'll show it again. Add another vocal track here, just any old vocal track. Leave the monitoring off and change it to channel two. That way, if you're using a two-channel interface, all you need to do is use this as your dummy track, record onto your original track, turn your monitoring on there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, then you're good to go. So... That way, when we hit record, it'll actually keep us on this view. So we can watch the recording as we're going along and we can see where we're at in the track. It just makes things a lot, uh, a lot, ex a lot uh, extra. Um, bad mitten. Yeah, I'm just going to go bad mitten. <laughs> totally. Uh, so um, I might do this in the intro. Then we can move it if we want to. So let's hit record. I didn't have the monitoring on, so you didn't hear me say that. But if we come back to here, let's... Oh, now I do have it on. Uh, this is what I said there. This is the bad mitten that I recorded there. Bad mitten. Bad mitten. <laughs> I don't think it's going to quite do it for me. But uh, let's just bring it into the mix and see what it does, shall we? Because it's just going to be weird. Yeah, so it's it, because of the timing of the track and the timing of that reversed reflection we get there, it's not going to quite line up. So now we can just let's delete this dummy track, but we'll just move this around until it's somewhere where it might actually work okay here. 
yeah. Uh, it, it's going to be weird. So uh, we'll, we'll just play around with it. Uh, why don't we just uh, halve the speed and see what this does. <laughs> Rolling down the street at 17 past 39. Don't know what time. No. Um, again, the, the thing about experimenting is sometimes things work, sometimes they really don't. So you just got to go with it and see what happens. Uh, let's try this one. Rolling down the street at 17 past 39, don't know what time it... Yeah, so I, I don't think I can find a use for these reversed reflections, but... It's a fun thing, and I reckon if you play with it, you'll find something that you can do with it. Uh, what do I want? I want I want to try some of these distorted tones here because there's some cool sort of funky robotic kind of things in here that we have under the distorted tones. So we don't want anything too extreme. Oh, come on. Electric sheep, though. Electric sheep? Let's just uh, see what electric sheep sounding like here. Roll, roll. Yeah, too much of a bit crusher sound there. Uh, what about a phased bite? Roll, roll. That's better. All right, we're going to go with that uh, because um, I'm just going to do like some backing vocals here uh, to go along with this that are just going to go something like that just to, to play along with. So uh, let's just experiment with this. Well, this time we'll just use the one track there. Turn our monitoring on and we'll hit record. Uh, just what, what keys is this? That's what we're going to do. Right, ready? Because why not? All right, we'll come back. We'll turn off the monitoring, or you're just going to hear me phasing out there. And we can just sit that down in the mix a little bit again. And uh, let's have a play. Rolling down the street at 17 past 39. Don't know what time it is, because I can't even tell the time. Yeah, girl, we got to get down. going to get down. All right, so we don't, we don't want it in that second part. So when we hit that sort of bridgey section, we don't want it. So we just remove it. Trim it off, because we want this to be a little bit more... Yeah, girl, we gotta get down. In fact, we want this to be so different that, because uh, I'm starting to sort of do more of the mixing process here now, but for this part, let's just cut all these, everything but, I reckon, everything but the kit. So we'll remove those and just see if this can sound a little bit different here. Yeah, girl, we gotta get down, gonna get down to the park and play badminton. Right? So we're starting to sort of find a bit of a groove and a mix here. I think we've covered everything in this pack, but let's double check, shall we? We'll go back, back to the pack, and we'll come here to our sound library and uh, just double check that we've explored everything that, uh, that Mark has put in this pack. So the Watch the Sound pack, 200 Apple Loops, we've played around with them. There's six drum and beat sequencer kits. I'm loving that Hollywood Foley and the, the kitchen one with the scissors for the shaker. That's pretty pretty solid right there. 24, five, 24 keyboard patches we've played with and the 30 audio recorder patches. The one thing we haven't touched is the live loops grid. Should we do it? Just for fun, just to see if we can add some live loops goodness to this one. Uh, so what we can do is, if we've got a track that we've already created here, which I'm reasonably happy with the mix, it's working okay. Oh, I did, I, I did say I'd show you one thing, which I've showed before, so apologies for those that have seen this. If we turn the FX track on here, just hit record, just uh, shuffle them in a little FX. Doesn't matter what, because we're not going to actually use the FX, and then uh, tap it off again. What we can do is if we just delete out this FX here, this pink bit here, we've now got this FX track that we can use. And if we go to this visual EQ and turn it on, we can use this gain slider as a master gain control. So check this out. If we play it now. We can turn it down. Rolling down the street at 17 past 39. Don't know what time. So I would probably turn it down about sort of 4 or 5 dB just to make sure that we've got a little bit of headroom at the top there. That way, if we're going to export this to master or to do something with afterwards, then we've got some extra space. So there you go. Bonus tip. 
All right, let's play with some uh, let's play with some live loops, shall we? So to get to live loops, we go to my instrument browser, and then up here where it's got tracks, we actually touch touch top live loops. And uh, if we find the watch the sound crate digging live loops pack, and we'll see if any of these will actually work with our sound, because it's going to be a bit different. Uh, but we'll just play. So here's guitars sounds. Whoop. <laughs> I kind of like that, the guitar and FX. Um, so what we'll do, and I think that'll work well coming into this little bridge break. So you don't have to use live loops like, because what you can do, if you've not used live loops before, you basically hit a column here. And it, it creates its whole entire thing. So you can play around with these, and uh, I've showed these on the, check out the Dua Lipa track, uh, the, the Dua Lipa pack one down in the description. There's a, a whole playlist there. The Dua Lipa one, I went into some more detail with Live Loose. But for this one, I'm really liking. I think this will just create like a mellow, oop, I keep playing it over and over again. Uh, this will create like a mellow kind of vibe as we come into this little bridge section at the end here. So I'm just going to try this. We'll hit the record the button. Time. Yeah, girl. We gotta get ya. I didn't hit it at the right time. Well, undo. All the time. Yeah, girl. We gotta get down. Gonna get down to the park and play. Badminton. Right? Because it's kind of using the same guitar from that loop, but it's got a slightly different sound there. And uh, is there some bass that can go with that? I reckon that bass might work. What do you reckon? All the time. Yeah, girl. Again, I keep not pressing it in time. All the time. Hit it. There you go. It's gonna play. Yeah, girl. We gotta get down. Gonna get down to the park and play. Badminton. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the pack was made to be together. And uh, there you go. If you didn't know how these work, now it's just created these as individual tracks that we can have complete control over here in our track view. Right? I think this is pretty darn cool. So <clears throat> let's just do a little wee bit of mixing here because we've got a lot of sounds here. We want a little bit more stereo space in this one, don't we? So we'll build this up and I'll just do a little bit of mixing. So just to, remember, to remind myself of what the sounds are. And we don't need this one either, do we? So we've got our first track here. That can sit right up the middle. We've then got our percussion here. And we've got, didn't we add in, yeah, so we've added in some other drums down here, didn't we? So let's bring all of our drums up together because these ones were created with our drum kit and these ones were created with uh, our, um, our loops. So we've got these three together. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna grab this disco break here and we're gonna just give a little bit of panning here. Let's put the disco break over onto the left, sort of 50% left, and this one 50% right. This will just give us a nice sort of stereo feel for this. So we've got a bit of space now. And then when we bring out Lin Tom Shakers in here. Yeah, let's put these right over here. Just for something different, right? Where's our bass? So let's bring our bass in. Now bass you'll just generally want down the middle. Let's bring this effect though. Let's let's we could do some panning or in fact, let's do some panning automation. Oh come on, we get we're getting deep into this one now. So panning automation uh, is kind of fun. What we need to do to do this is duplicate that track. We need to copy this original one go to our second track and paste it. And what we're gonna to do to do panning automation, this is a bit advanced here, but we've got 12 minutes, so we're gonna do it. Uh, what we can do is grab the automation on this track, tap on there and go automation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the button at the top left here. We're gonna tap there and tap there. We're gonna make this volume go down. And then we're gonna do the opposite over on this track and we're gonna make the volume go up. And I think you're probably ahead of me here but check out the sort of cool effect that we can get with this. Because what we now want to do is pan one of these hard left. So we'll pan this first one hard left. We'll pan this one hard right. And now take a listen to this transition coming in now. Hear that go from left to right? Probably needs a little bit more volume just so that it can come here in the mix. So uh, we'll go back to our automation and we'll just uh, bump this up. Boop. 
and bump this one up, just so we can hear it a little bit better in the mix. And uh, we're going to go with that. There you go. An extra bonus bonus tip, right? All right, we're layering this up now. We've got our uh, this one here, which is our electric pad, our sofa, electric red sofa pad. So we definitely want this to just be quiet. Just sitting under there in the middle, that's fine. This is our second bass sound that we have. So uh, this one here, we'll again leave down the middle. But we need a little bit of extra bass with this one, yeah. So what we'll do, we'll go to our plugins and EQ here, and we'll just come in here <clears throat> to our visual EQ, and we're just gonna roll off the top end just to give it more of a bass feel here. So let's uh, take a listen. So there it is. But we actually just want it to just sit underneath like that, yeah. All right, this is coming together. This is, uh, again, a little, little quick mix mix test here. Uh, we've now got this uh, these Mellotron flutes. I think we can just leave them where they are. Yep. Badminton. <laughs> down the street and... Now, the vocals there, uh, we probably just need a little bit additional. <clears throat> we'll take the effect EQ off there, and we'll just add a little bit of track reverb on this one just to give a little bit of hand. You know, a little bit of reverb never hurt. <laughs> Always helps out a vocal if you're a little bit uh, lacking in confidence with it. So let's take a listen. Rolling down the street at 17 past 39 Don't know what time it is Cause I can't even There we go. Uh, and then our little phased bit here that we do, our little backing track. Rolling down the street at 17 past 39 Don't know what time it is Cause I can't even tell the time all right, we'll leave that there. We'll just bury that a little bit more in the mix. Now let's bring in these Mark Ronson guitars and basses here in the end and just make sure these are sitting right. Yeah, girl, we gotta get down, gonna get down to the park and play. Okay, I think we're cool. I think we've got a decent sort of rough static mix together. We've done some volume automation. We've done some fun things here. Let's get our... Uh, let's get our... Uh, solos all off <clears throat> everything's back on everything's cool and uh yeah we've we've used this fx track to um yeah to just reduce the volume just down a little tiny smidge so that we're not overcooking it a bit what do you think it's come together okay uh i just wanted to explore this and actually show you the way that you can bring something together and you don't have to spend a lot of time you don't have to have a lot of know-how how much theory did i use in this virtually none because you don't really need that and if you if you just left out the the playing of the the instruments here and just use loops as you saw you can still use some cool things what did we do we reversed loops we used the settings here we sped up and slowed things down we changed the pitch and the tempo we did a whole bunch of stuff that can customize and i i could safely release this song these these loops are royalty free but the problem is if someone else has used the exact same loops in the exact same order as you have then it's not, you're going to get yourself in trouble because they may have copywritten theirs and then yours is the same as theirs. So don't make it the same. You don't need to. You can do some cool things like panning automation and changes up here to uh, to create a song like that. So uh, should we take a listen to this one? So this is the uh, Bad Mitten. Maybe this is a, a brand new uh, a brand new track called Bad Mitten. We'll play this track. If you've got any final questions or comments and you're here live, throw them in the chat. If you're watching on the replay, don't worry. We love you just as much. Hit the like button if you enjoy this one and if you're going to go and play some badminton now because of that. It must be the Olympics. Maybe that's why I've got badminton in my head. Badminton. Mitten. This, has got to be, this song's got to be called Badminton. Anyway, I'm going to turn down my vocal mic. Let's take a listen to Badminton. It's got to be a Righty Dokey track, right? By Righty Dokey. It's all about the badminton, yeah. It's a badminton world, we're all just living in it. 
<laughs> All righty. Uh, Jalen Lay says, have you heard of the Rough Rider plugin? Sounds great on bass and drums. Helps the bass cut through the mix and some thicker on the drums. Yes, Rough Rider 3. They're up to the third version. It is very, very cool. So if you are looking for a compressor, um, we'll just we'll show it real quick here because we got we got uh, five minutes. So yeah, if you wanted to say roughen up, let's let's grab this this loop for instance. We'll just turn our volume back up. So we got this one here. Nice drum loop, yeah. But what if you wanted to just rub it in the dirt a little bit? Well, you can come to your plugins and EQ. You can hit edit. You can hit plus, and you can go audio unit extension. So you will need to download this. It's free on the App Store, and it's awesome. Scroll on down to the Rough Rider. I've missed it, haven't I? There it is, Rough Rider 3. And uh, yeah, even on some of the default presets and things that you have here, uh, it, it's pretty cool. So what will we go with? We'll just uh, we'll go with the, the good one. <laughs> the good one preset here. Uh, oh, come on. Tap. Done. Close. All right. So we'll play this and then... then. Very different, right? And you can obviously make it less subtle. So you can reduce the amount in the mix. But hear how it's just going to make it really pop and crack through. So yeah, Rough Rider 3 for a free plugin is ridiculous. It punches above its weight for sure. The the other cool plugin that's free that I like that I'd probably throw on a vocal on a track like this is Wider. I know many of you know Wider already. Oh, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to remove this track reverb to put Wider on. <laughs> we've run out of uh, we've run out of space. But we can come here and if we scroll down to the bottom because it's W for Wider, we can tap on Wider, and this will actually just give some width to our vocal. So if we uh, play this. Yeah, girl. Gotta get down, gotta get down to the park and play. Badminton. So I'd probably throw some width on those vocals just to again give it a little bit more stereo spectrum. Yeah, spectrovision. Uh, Thomas Christ says there's a desktop version of Rough Rider 3 as well, and I use it on most of my drum tracks. <laughs> Sounds like a uh, jazz sci fi type song. And yes, Rough Rider is free and uh thomas never played any badminton badminton yeah it's it's weird you play it with a shuttlecock wouldn't it be funny if i just ended the show then it's just like badminton you play it with a shuttlecock and then you just get the next video ah oh, sorry oh let me try that again you play it with a shuttlecock let's see got it the bell to so, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I do enjoy playing around with these packs. I hope you enjoyed seeing the pack in action. Once again, if you had some fun, hit the like button. If you think other people would dig on this, remember, everything we used here today was free. There's nothing that I used here that will cost you a single dollar euro or great British pound. So dive into GarageBand. If you haven't already downloaded it, download it, update it to the latest version. Dive into the sound packs and catch those. If you want to learn more about this, uh, I'm I'm loving it. I'm only into episode two, but I'm probably going to binge the rest of them today. Uh, but do check out the series. Again, you can get a seven-day free trial. I'm not affiliated with uh, with Apple TV at all. Uh, I have it now because I've got the Apple One, which is another way to do it. If you need cloud storage as well as Apple Music as well as Apple TV, the Apple One package is pretty good. I pay $40 a month and I get everything. And that's for me. Might not be for you, but do check it out. And again, get your seven-day free trial and binge all, I think there's eight episodes, binge every episode uh, if you want to, if you want to go that way. Uh, but yeah, it's very cool, very cool series. And uh, again, when we got Dave Grohl, Paul McCartney, like, the, and Mark Ronson taking you through this sort of stuff, it, it's pretty amazing, pretty cool. And uh, I'm super impressed that, that Apple have got these producers and it's showing GarageBand some love, isn't it? Like GarageBand iOS is definitely getting a whole lot of love here. Thanks everyone for being here. Once again, there are more videos down in the description if you want to learn more about these packs. There's a whole playlist. We'll be back again to explore the other seven packs. We've still got seven to go here. If you're in the future, they'll be linked in the playlist downstairs as well. Thanks for being here, folks. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Keep creating. And I'll see you real soon. Bye for now. See ya.